The name definitely presents a marketing challenge. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go! Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and I'm shopping my way home from the show in Michigan. I'm headed through small town Indiana right now because I am ultimately going to an estate sale preview just over the border in Kentucky tomorrow morning. But in the meantime, I'm doing some sightseeing, some thrifting, a little bit of antiquing. So let's go have some fun. Isn't this a cool sign? Corridon was the original capital of Indiana. Look how it was made with the sandstone just piled and mortared together. In the Civil War, a big battle was happening right outside of here. The place I hit is called the Picker's Nest. Vintage jewelry, vintage clothing, architectural salvage. Yeah, they had all those things. It was just big enough to go through really fast, but I couldn't film, so I'll show you their outside because they had some neat stuff. I like these stools. I mean, they're beige, but they have a good aspect to them in terms of their style. Very 60s mod, and they look comfortable, maybe 70s. No idea what they went for. There is a local auction house I saw on the way in here. Vintage Treasures at Antique Mall and Flea Emporium. Unfortunately, I missed this time. I'll get there next time. There wasn't a whole lot of time to look, but I got these really cool shades on a pair of lamps that are from the period that need just a little restoration, but the shades are great. They were 20. There's a bag of a few other things. Corridon is clearly a place of unusual names. The Emmett Bean Blossom Building. Beckard Auctions, I'm sure that they do house content auctions. And then there's a place that, hmm, the name definitely presents a marketing challenge. But apparently, they have a sense of humor about it. This is the last stop in Corridon, and but I am going to try the Goodwill because it's right by the freeway on the way. We'll see what the furniture and books look like first. Maybe records, maybe video games, children's books. It does seem like they have some stuff but it looks like it's pretty modern. Whether I find anything or not, I'm already so happy to see that this Goodwill has a lot of merchandise and it has things that clearly have some age. They haven't picked every single old thing out of here. And now whether I find anything that's for me, that's another question, but at least there feels like there's a chance. Nope. Italian, 1970, it's only $2.99. I just bought so much glass though. A little scrap. I'm being pretty picky because I just bought a bunch of stuff. That's an old bottle there. Doesn't have the collar all the way up. In fact, it looks like the seam stops right there. So we're looking before 1907, it's 99 cents. It's cute, the embossing is neat, but it had a paper label that's long gone and I don't know who it is. I'm sure it'd be worth the price. It's just again, when you've gotten so much What are these down to? Three bucks each? That's not bad. 74 through... Oh yeah, all the common years, the 60s and 70s are the most common by far in both the Royal Copenhagen and the Bing and Grondel. We 
wish I could let you hear Lowrider, which is playing, but I'm sure I'll have to cover this up with music. You never know these days. I just didn't see anything that motivated me enough to buy it. It wasn't that I couldn't have bought a couple of things. I just have so much. So I left it for someone else. Share the wealth. Anyhow, this Goodwill was nice and clean, and I got the feeling that stuff does come through here sometimes. On the other hand, I find it very interesting that once again, no showcases, no jewelry. And there is the sign for the estate sale. These enterprising folks are having a sale on the way to the sale. I didn't see anything old in it though. I am at an estate sale on a Thursday. A lot of estate sales start Thursday nowadays, it seems. And we are out in the country in Stanley, Kentucky, a very little town near Owensboro. There is an estate sale by a local company that tends to do really good estate sales. They tend to get really good things and they do tend to price them high the first time that they go around, which was last weekend. This is a big enough sale. They're doing three weekends. So today is supposed to be 25% off and they also opened a building that wasn't open the last time. The last time I wasn't here, but Xenomorph went and scouted for me and found a good pair of depression glass uh, curtain tie backs and they were priced reasonably even though everything else was pretty high. So you never know what you'll find and we're going to see what it's like at 25% off. Well, the first thing for sale we haven't even gotten to the house is hiding in the flowers. This thing? Yes, and it is $60 I and I have to that. say... It doesn't look like that. Even, that looks like a very old tag. Uh, it might it just like be faded. Now. That actually seems like a good price if it's for sale. There's a ornamental lion and a bunch of various garden stuff. Big, what looks like a concrete urn. Now this could be older. We see these umbrella jars time to time. It's hard to say without picking it up. Yeah, it looks like it might be 1930s or 40s rather than uh, later, but it could also be 80s because they revived a lot of those and with the stoneware jars sometimes they revive the color, the pattern, and the whole thing. The bird bath is 45, but 20% off excluding workshop because they hadn't opened that, so it'd be 36 with the discount. I do like the concrete lady statue. The pedestal, if you had something to put on it, would be a good price. $40 comes down to $32 on that statue, so they're starting to get in the realm of possibility. And $25 on the chair here, that is that 50s style chair that I like. Set of ice cream chairs. The lawn cart is sold. It went for $15. That actually seems very reasonable as garden art, and it is still solid enough to use. It's got a good 1950s shape. Here's an old bike, and it's a men's bike, which helps. Men's tend to be more valuable and have been ridden harder, and it's got some nice things like the baskets. And it would be $80. The basket alone is worth about $30, but it has a newer seat. I mean, this is one of these, it might be worth more dead than alive, but I wouldn't see the point in taking it apart. Good table bases. So there is some promising stuff here. It may not be cheap cheap. Some of it might be buyable now. Some of it might be take your chance and wait until next weekend when everything will be half off. Little bicycle here is $25. This is the workshop that was not open last weekend, so we'll take a look down here too. 
somebody bought themselves a bunch of fence rail and a gate. Neat old barn here. This is a nice piece of property. Right. Looks like somebody bought a lot of wood. Well, this is a workshop That's and nice other lead. stuff. Old red galvanized nice tin here. In there. Twenty-five dollars. Pretty good. All right, oh, wow, so we've got old discussions. People like those sometimes. An old sharpening hone. I know someone who collects these, but $20 is more than he or I would pay. Mr. America, the virile fitness magazine for today's man. He can hold a lot of women, can he? Are those 1970s? Yeah, they look like it. Yeah, February, April, 1970. Cactus stump for 75. That's neat looking. Oh, yes, and if you like very oiled up men, well, there you go. But these actually are pretty funny. They've got a cheesecake factor that I think someone would like. Yes. I remember as a child writing off for the Charles Atlas bodybuilding. It didn't work. I was mentioning about old cans being found in garages, and there's a 1950s Maxwell House can right there. But it's missing its lid, unfortunately, and that's what a collector would want. So for $6, it'll have to stay. Some planes here in the $15 range for the one that's the best, which is in the middle there. I just got a large selection of these wood molding planes, so don't really need those, but let's see what's up on the bench here. Uh-huh. Fire truck bank and an old shell. The thing about workshops is that there'll be a bunch of tools and things that are functional and practical and certainly good for uh, people to use and to potentially resell if the price is right, but then you'll find other stuff that Dan just liked and threw out there that can be interesting. Some of these uh, old books, for example, let's see what the top one here that isn't in bad shape is. Well, what is that? Uh, what, the, is this, what is this pattern? Oh, they did marbling on those. Messages and Papers of the Presidents, Volume 8. Oh, actually, it's probably a collectible set. If you had all of them, it would be definitely worth something. Hi, oh my, baking mixes. We see these quite a lot in kitchens. Kentucky license plates. License plates seem to sell well if you take them from one state and take them to another. You find somebody who's trying to collect the other states and they already have their own. Bunch of old shutters. They're priced well, but you have to build the suit. I like this piece of furniture here, this, this metal rolling cabinet. 125. Oh yeah, that is kind of neat, isn't it? Yeah, I kind of like it. And this is 1880s, so you can see by the design here, 1880s or 90s, so that's rather old. $12 is not a bad price. And this one's nice with the aesthetic period design on it. And that one with the lock set and the escutcheons is $20, so have to wait for that to go on sale. If this was a snake, it would have bitten me. There's a great fan right there, $50. Again, that's something to watch as it goes on sale because it's certainly worth more than 50, but not enough more to buy it yet. These old horseshoes and planting wheels and such are interesting to people to use as art. This is the top of the carriage lamp, but it's missing the bottom because it would have looked like that on the bottom, but this one is cracked, so we don't have a good one. We have a couple of incomplete ones. Tattoo outfit. Well, I have a feeling this isn't tattooing the way that we think of tattooing. I'm sure it's for branding cattle. Yeah, well, yep, get the ink. Yeah, I got the original stuff in there. That looks painful. I would not want to be a cow. Especially this cow or whatever this animal was. $29.50. Now, tractor seats that have words in them are popular and are collectible. This one is priced to me full retail at $175, but it is a good one. Well, 
I had sort of ignored that, but I did see that that was here, and it's One Chadwick. Oh, it's Chadwick. Isn't, isn't that interesting? Somebody had a lot of fun making a house for their mailbox. It's $40. That's pretty cute. That would sell in the right place. I think I'll wait to see if it goes on sale. A dollar for the sprinkler topper would be great, except it seems to be crooked at the bottom. And the world's greatest husband. Oh, yes. Showing us all up. And then Ertl's cone tops. These are kind of rusted, but it's nice to see cone top beer cans. These are going to be 1940s and 50s and earlier. Now here's something you might not expect to find in a garage, and I'm going to keep my voice down because these could be good. Ten dollars. That's got a nice shell. That's going to be probably English from about 1890. These with the faces are early as well sometime around 1900 or 10. And let's see who made them, because that can make a big difference in the value. If it was Etco, there we go, it is Etco. These are very good, I'm going to get these. And then these are probably English, but the Etco, even though she's a little worn, that's a very good set. There's a shed full of stuff outside here and another bird bath. I definitely will come back for concrete on the last weekend. Now here's something that looks like it would sell in Florida. Where is the price? Well, not sure, but I'll bet someone in here knows. It says, come on in. I will. <laughs> We took it over to him, but he's busy, so I'll just keep looking in the meantime. Couple of neat ladies in watercolor. Nicely done, but amateur, but very cute. I like the frames, too. $20 each on those. This building is 20% off today, though. All right, some blue ball jars, a very melty candle. These picnic baskets sell, but I don't even get that price, but I like it. Fairy Soap, the Oval Cake. This might actually be old, but there's a lot of reproductions, and this one's very lightweight, so that is a repro. Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a quick break and thank you for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, please do subscribe because then you can click that bell to be notified of future videos. We have membership packages. There's a couple of different levels. We appreciate the support of our super fans who help us do extra bonus content. You can check that out by hitting the join button below or clicking the link in the description. And lastly, we want to ask you to check out our new channel, The Antique Nomad Live. That's live with an exclamation point where we're doing additional content of a live nature Hall sales, bonus stuff, we'll have a lot of fun there too. So check us out here on the Antique Nomad and also on the Antique Nomad Live. Now let's get back to this video. Blue column vase. This is an American one out of the 60s and I like the color. It's not exactly swung, not much anyway. I always like the oatmeal and coffee canisters and these sets from the 20s and 30s that had this cute cottage look. Cottage core, I think they call it now. Cute little fox hunt lampshade. If I had a nice little lamp to put that on, that would be great. Some Capri blue glass here. Nice old typewriter. These folks obviously were collectors. This is reverse painted and a great frame. Unfortunately, you can see where the paint has started to give way. That's a real problem on a lot of these 1910s era reverse painted pieces. They just didn't put a stabilizer on the back and if they're not in perfect climate control, they'll chip out like that. Sand pails and a top, a few little kids toys. John Goodman is Fred Flintstone. Here's a whole bunch of weeping gold all in one place. Now, if I could find a panther, I would make some people very happy. Yeah? 25 before the discount. So you want it? Oh yes, please. So much of the weeping gold was done in Ohio. 
This is a Salem China blank. Generally this was done by aftermarket decorating companies and so you'll see their mark on the bottom. Weeping Bright Gold. Lumens China. These have a nice modernist appeal. So do this salt and pepper set. But again, not quite ready for those prices yet. Three Pyrex bowls, 65. Some tins, a nice spice rack. Here's little leather libraries. These were very popular in the 19 teens and 20s. And they came in sets of 20, actually. And they have these divided in tens. Three dollars a piece is about right for wholesale. They can go for five or six or eight a piece if you have the right ones and people need them for a set. But they were sold originally door to door with the book stands, those book slides that you see some of them were made for these books and you would buy a whole set. It was generally very famous works of the time or previous times. So the Days of Ancient Rome, for example. Something about friendship. They're kind of back and forth here. These are the 50 best poems of England. So it was very heady stuff. It was at a time when people were a lot of new immigrants to the country and a lot of people wanted to show that they fit in by having things that were written in English, by learning English better, by reading the classics, and basically fitting in, honestly. That was how things worked back then, is you wanted to seem as undifferent from everyone as possible. These little buildings are cute. They're three dollars each. I'm not sure who the maker is. But we have a stamp here. There are various companies that made these. This particular one says made in England, where a lot of these were done, for Peter Charles of Philadelphia. So these were an import made in England. These would be 1970s or 80s. And at $3 each, you can make yourself a nice little town for Christmas or a display. It's actually a cute set. You even have the White Rabbit Saloon if you are psychedelic era music lovers, you will know Jefferson Airplane Song of the same name, of course named for Alice in Wonderland. This is unfortunate that this broke. This is a magazine rack in stick form from the Victorian era, but it's missing part of itself. Little German weather readers. These are 60s era though because the figures are plastic. I look for the older ones in wood. And then these have a nice stretch glass or onion skin surface. $8 each with the discount, probably by Imperial Glass. These are 1920s. Stretches Carnival, but then it stretches at the end. They would expand it out in a way to make it deliberately crackle on the edges. That's Stretch Glass. This is a nice brass stand. We see a lot of these because they look Victorian, but there were later ones made, and this one doesn't say how much, so I'll have to ask about that. $38 each on the mirrors here. <laughs> These are substantial and seem like they're at least pressed wood, so that's not bad. They're a good style. There's definitely going to be some things to come back for. Some things for today and some things for next weekend. Oh, uh, I saw that and I kind of forgot to look at it, so let's take a look. I know it's Hall China because yeah, it says so right there. Display. It's probably a dispenser from... Yeah, it's a dispenser. It would have sat in a uh, soda fountain and had it would have gone down in the ice or some sort of a ledge. I like these racks. I see this one back here is priced at 45. That's about what I get for them. Nice bird cage here. A lot of store jars and old barrel jars. People do like these old barrel shaped jars from the 30s and 40s. And there, there's a lot of good blue enamel wear. Again, prices are pretty much up there at this point, so gonna have to wait on this stuff. I see a lot of 65s and 45s, and that's just more than I get for them. Hazel Atlas or Anchor Hawk or something? I believe it's Hazel Atlas. Uh, yeah, the A and the H is Hazel Atlas, and it's a dollar, but it's a furniture coaster, so yeah, but what's anyone gonna do with it? I guess a pin dish for a dollar. Yeah. Oh, of course, it's yeah. Not a, it's not a furniture thing, it's a boat. Well, I think it is a furniture coaster, actually, but uh, it'd be usable as a boat, so sure. Here's a bunch of 1930s uranium glass. 
This is all depression glass from that era. All of this should glow under a black light. Uh, I'm just it's all priced again about uh, retail right now, so we're going to have to wait for that to come down. But we're we are finding some deals too. Cute little set of bookends here. Thirty-five for the pair. Again, so much of this is full price. It's twenty percent off today. It's going to be a lot better deal next weekend. But I'm going to buy what's a good deal now and then come back. Nice kitchen queen here. Okay. Four twenty-five. They call it possum belly or a belly cabinet in some parts. When they've got the round bottoms. Not a terrible price for the yellow screen print with the caddy. $30 for the set. Hello, how are you? All right, so we're going into the main house here. Zeno is very excited, and that means this must really have a lot of good stuff because I'm the one who usually gets excited. <laughs> They were obviously collectors because there's a whole stack of antiques magazines from about 20 years ago. This would sell in Florida, $195. The one I got for $25 outside, that was a much better deal. Usually on Thursdays. I suspect these are newer, yes, the made in China. They feel very greasy the minute you touch them. Here's a bunch of calico wear in the brown, made in England. Royal Crownford where Ironstone made in England. This mark is a 1970s mark. 70s and into the early 80s. Very collectible now. Nice Lucite stand. That's, that's supposed to be like that. Yeah, I guess it is. It looks like it was burnished. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is. You're right. It's, it's, it's definitely a do. This is a European spice set. Looks like probably Scandinavian or German. Only thing is it's $70 and you know I just don't do well with European labeled items. Americans really seem to want to buy things made in English. No matter how cool they are from Europe, whether it's advertising or kitchen stuff, if it's got European writing on it, I have a hard time selling it. Which is unfortunate because they made some really great stuff. But it's just not appreciated. And it was immaculate and I mean clean and it looked like a showroom in the house. Forty-two dollars for the tumble up, but that's got a printed rather than a really screen painted or free painted. But this Mary Gregory painted picture is genuinely painted on the surface. Bunch of Fenton cranberry here. More Fenton here in the quilted. And they're really beautiful, but again, they are right where I would be. Oh, yes, that is cameo glass. That's cool. Yes. So there's a lot of reproductions of Galley. Thank you for holding that. But this one has the small signature in a place where a signature would go. Fenton Burmese does glow because the custard in it is Fenton custard and their custard does glow. Yeah, $5.95. It's a nice piece. Yeah, there's some really beautiful stuff in here, that's for sure. And then up here there's a couple of pieces of Lotes or Lotes type glass. This green one here and the one I really like is down here. They have it marked at Lotes. This is Austrian from about 1890. A different kind of iridized finish, but they tended to do hand pulled sides and things that gave it a texture and it's very desirable. This one's priced at $7.50. Again, I think that's top dollar. Around 1910, all of these beer tankards were very popular, partly because there was a discussion about prohibition coming in. People wanted to show if they were not pro pro prohibition, well they probably weren't using these for lemonade. This one's Moriaga from Japan. 
$68. I love Zalde. Yeah, they're great. They do these really great, uh, it's, it's made in Hungary. This glaze is called Eosin. I think they developed it around 1900. And it's just beautiful stuff because you get the, yeah, thank you for showing because it really, it goes from golds to greens to a little bit of blue. And it was very hard to get that metallic glaze. This is around mm -hmm. the same time that Tiffany is trying to make glass look like metal. Water, water, uh, yeah, she's, getting water. she's a water bearer, yes. And they have the deer and some of these that is still in production. Kaiser Porcelain made the big fish tray. This place is really displayed like a very nice, fine. Uh oh. Well, that wasn't me backing up, I promise. Things happen sometimes. However, no breakage. This parlor, I mean, this these people had a wonderful collection. There's no doubt about it. They obviously collected for years and years and were very proud of it. And they said that uh, the place was really immaculate. It was just very full. Spelter bust, 75. Here's a jardinier end pedestal. So two separate pieces. Okay. And this is Majolica and it is priced at 175. Again, today I can't really afford much in here. I didn't expect to be, but it's fun to get to show you. And I'll be looking at the film to figure out what I'm coming back to get because these prices will drop. Next weekend will be the last weekend of the sale and this stuff will need to go. So at that point, it will be going. Now here's something that's totally out of character for this house that I love, which is this McCoy pattern called Cascade with this great blotchy purpley glaze. It does have the McCoy mark. This is when McCoy is really starting to improve their quality and go towards a modern design. And that's gonna be sometime in the 60s. $35, again, when that goes on sale, I'll be very interested. I like these gold painted spelter statue with the fellow with the horse for 75. Again, when these prices drop just a little, I'll be willing to buy quite a lot. This is supposed to look like Royal Dalton Flambe, but this is actually Japanese. We see these two fall staff trays quite a bit because they were redone earlier than most redos. Again, they're much lighter than the originals, and this one actually says right on the back, 1971. So this is 1971 redo, and you do see these around. They're neat looking because they have the style of old. Just realize that they're not. I like the opalescent edge on the Goofus class. I've always preferred it with opalescent edge personally because I think it just sets off the colors better and gives a more defined border. This stand has the flowers attached. Very fancy, probably Italian, priced at 120 under this neat pair of lamps. Oh, cool. Yes, there's an e-pairn for you. This is Fenton. It's not wildly old, but boy, it is fantastic. And look at the way it glows. It's priced at 595 and again, that's, that's a full retail on that, but that is a really good piece that you almost never see. So there's a reason people are willing to pay it if they're serious advanced collectors. And here's more Burmese, nice pieces. Have to see how the prices are next week. Although I have to say the creamer is only 1850, that might be worth taking now. 24 on that, 75 on the tall pitcher, 12 on the toothpick. Did this one glow? Do you mind? Yeah, yeah. That might be a buy. Oh yes. Spot the uranium glass. And this one is Fenton as well. Very nice. 20% off. I'm going to take a couple of these pieces today and watch a couple for next week. And up here, well, yes, but it is nice stuff. Yeah, very nice stuff. These look like Kazal shades, but it actually says Orine, so that could be Stuben. We'd have to take one off to see for sure. Priced at $7.95, but I have sold just the set of shades, and it does have the cap as well, which is often missing. I have sold just the set of shades for $800 in the past. So many things. Perfume bottles, dresser boxes, Putz houses. I mean, you name it, and they probably collected it. We've got RS Prussia and Bristol glass. There's a whole case full of blue. A lot of this is Fenton and Westmoreland. Some of it is earlier. Some of these pieces up here are 
likely to be Northwood or other press glass makers from around 1900. Well, that's a very quick haul, but I am definitely going to have to come back because they have a lot of really cool stuff here and there is more to see. In the meantime, I'm George the Antique Nomad at the social media you see listed below. We will be back with more from this sale and more from adventures in antiquing and collecting, so we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!